you to the um, food day call for campus organizers. Um, thanks to everyone for joining us tonight. Um, we're really excited to have you all here. This is probably the last call for universities that we're going to have before food day, which is in just about a month and a half now, which is hard to believe, but also really exciting. Um, my name is Haley Galuli, and I'm one of Food Day's um, national project coordinators. Um, I've worked with a lot of you on the call um, about Food Day, with Food Day on your campus. Um, really excited to have you all here. Um, really quick, I wanted to start with um, some housekeeping. So um, we're using the GoToMeeting platform, um, which we're doing to to make the call more, more interactive. So there are a couple of ways that you can interact with me and the other panelists during this call. Um, the first, if you have a question, um, you should be on the, the webinar panel on your computer, a raised hand icon. If you click that, that lets me know that you have a question. Um, and during the Q&A session, which we'll have at the end of the presentation, um, I can unmute your line and you can ask your question to me or to any of our other panelists or to everyone. You should also see a questions box towards the bottom of your panel. If you have a question during the Q&A session or at any time during the call, if you want clarification on something or you didn't quite hear what someone said, you can type that question and I'll be able to respond to you in real time. So um, just keep those two options in mind during the call. Um, so. What you see up on your screen right now is the basic agenda for today's call. Um, we're going to start off, I'm just going to go quickly, um, a quick run through of the Food Day campaign and let you know what's going on nationwide and specifically what's going on, some of the highlights with campuses. Um, then we're going to turn over to Hannah Wolf, who's, um, who's with Real Food Challenge, which is our, um, our partner organization doing outreach to campuses. And we're really excited to be working with Real Food Challenge. Um, which is a group, a nationwide group of student activists for the second year in a row. Um, we had a great partnership with them last year and we're, we're thrilled to be working together again. Um, and we're then going to get uh, various student perspectives on Food Day. We're lucky enough to have three students, um, and in addition, Hannah, who's also a college student, speaking with us about what they're doing at Food Day, doing for Food Day on their campuses. So we'll hear from Allison Mountjoy of New York University, Jessica Baltmanis of UC San Diego, Catherine Henry of Duke, and then we'll hear from Hannah, who's with Drew University. Um, and then after that, we're going to open it up to your questions. So I really encourage everyone to think of this as your webinar. Our goal today is to talk to you about the campaign and about Real Food Challenge, give you ideas for how to get involved. But more than anything, we want to help you troubleshoot. Um, if you are having trouble figuring out what type of event to do, if you're kind of stuck on who to reach out to, if you feel like you've reached out to everyone, but you're not seeing the results that you wanted, or if you just kind of want to hear, hear from other, hear new perspectives from other people, um, and hear why why food is a good idea on your on your campus. Um, that's our goal for today. So please, at any point, um, let us know the questions that you want answered. So to start, um, I think most people on the call are fairly familiar with Food Day. For those who aren't, I encourage you to check out our website, which is foodday.org. Um, we have our five main priority areas. Basically, we strive to be a campaign to um, activate and energize the food movement and for stronger, more sustainable, and more fair food policies in the United States. So we work to um, promote safer, healthier diets, support sustainable and organic farms, reduce hunger, reform factory farms um, as a way to protect the environment and support animal welfare and also champion fair working conditions for food and farm workers. And I know that um, on the call, we have a lot of current student activists. So I think that probably you can all think of ways that at least one of these priorities, and probably all, um, touch on issues that affect your campus, whether it's the food that's served in your cafeterias, the way the workers who, um, who pick that food or who serve that food um, are treated the way uh, the way the food is grown, whether it's good for the environment, and also you know whether it's good for you to eat. Um, all of these issues are important to campuses, and I think that's why we see um, we see college campuses as one of, as one of Food Day's most important constituencies. So, um, really quickly, why why is Food Day important on campus? Um, I think that 
we all can see that college campuses have been important incubators for social movements um, really since their inception, but in the United States for decades. Um, student faculty and administration or administration members are really critical in building the momentum toward a better food system. Um, campuses have the resources, which includes in a lot of cases funding, um, the, the backgrounds and knowledge and networks of faculty, and also the energy and enthusiasm um, and creativity of students to really educate and engage and make positive change. And so um, we really think that campuses are an essential part of our campaign. Uh, there are a lot of different ways that campuses can be involved in food day that we've seen uh, and that we've seen. Campuses can raise awareness about food injustices um, on your campus and across the food system, as well as about the good things that are going on um, with food. Campuses can educate the public and and students and faculty on campus by holding forums and panel discussions and candidate debates. Um, campuses are places of learning, as we all know, so they can be they can be forces of learning for for food system issues. Uh, campus campuses can be a place to improve the food that's served on campuses and conditions for farm workers, and that's something that I know Hannah with Real Food Challenge is going to talk about because um, this component is one of their main focuses. Campuses are a place to debate important food and agriculture issues and air new opinions and different opinions. It's, it's a time to share what you think and also listen to viewpoints that might be really different from you. Campuses are huge sources of mobilization for change um, and also ways to launch a movement or initiative that can continue on your campus for years to come. So I encourage you as we're having this call to think about what's currently going on on your campus and what you want to do that might be an ongoing initiative, whether it's securing a certain percentage of, of food served on campus locally or working with your community to start or strengthen a food policy council. There are many, many ways that you can use Food Day and use Real Food Challenge um, to mark something really important going forward. Um, so on the note of Real Food Challenge, as I mentioned, um, Food Day partners with Real Food Challenge um, in order to engage tens of thousands of student activists nationwide. Uh, we first partnered with RFC last year. Uh, 2011 was the first year of the Food Day campaign, and we were thrilled with the results. We had at least 255 college campuses participate, um, representing 47 states, um, and reaching an estimated 38,000 students. And that doesn't take into account the faculty and dining services directors and community members who participated in campus events. Um, the result was um, really a national movement or a series of national movements um, to promote a more just and sustainable um, food system and food practices on campus. So um, again, we're, we're thrilled that RFC is a partner um, and that we're able to work together on this. Um, there are many different campus highlights. For those of you who've been on our website, uh, you can check out the guide for campus organizers to see a more complete listing of what happened last year, what some of those 255 campuses did. Um, some highlights, the University of Minnesota held a community expo as a way to bring in community organizations and not just speak to the same audiences, but really try to reach beyond the campus. Baker University in Lawrence, Kansas um, had a really cool week-long of activities, um, and that's something I encourage people on the call to think about and tell us what you're doing to have have events not just on food day, but really throughout that week and hopefully throughout the year. Um, but so Baker University had a real food information fair with tabling, uh, a very interesting lecture on climate change, food security, and food sovereignty, um, a, a hunger summit hosted by Oxfam, as well as multiple film screenings. UC Hastings in the Bay Area in California had a panel discussion on reforming food served in prison systems and you know, a debate on whether whether the current system we have is fair. And so I think that's, a, that's an element of the food system that we don't necessarily think about, but something um, that's a, re it's a really unique thing to, to talk about for Food Day. So um, again, consider the ways that you can, you can make your event unique. Harvard University last year, uh, the Food Law Society hosted a TEDx uh, seminar co conference on food law and policy that was attended by um, most of the law school. Rhodes College in Memphis had a local chef cafeteria takeover in which they had um, different local chefs come in and take over 
portions of the cafeteria and cook healthy and local foods for students. Um, and again, there were over 200 other campuses from Alaska to Florida that also took part. Um, there are some great highlights for 2012, and I know that um, Hannah, as well as our other speakers, will share um, more of what they know and what, the, what, are, what they're doing on their campuses. Um, North Carolina State University is having a week of events that includes um, awareness raising events on farm worker justice, a campus farmer's market, and a local food dinner. Sacramento State University, um, which was a strong partner last year, is doing a week of events that will include a candidate forum. Um, and Sims Food Day comes just a week before the elections this year. And as I think we all know, this is a really, um, it's a really interesting and hotly contested election season. This Food Day is a great time to engage local candidates on food and agriculture issues and ask them what they think and what they'll do for your community. Haskell Indian Nations University was another partner last year. Um, their Green Campus Initiative is spearheading events around indigenous foods. Again, um, a way of looking at food system issues that touch on your campus specifically. Um, and finally, Babson College, which has been a fantastic partner this year and last, is holding multi-day events um, that are focused generally around the concept of food entrepreneurship. Um, the featured guests will be Andrew Zimmern of Bizarre Foods. Um, they have panelists representing Massachusetts restaurants, nonprofits, um, and the academic community. I know that they're doing a youth entrepreneurship summit, and then I believe an ideation conversation, closing out their food day activities in which, um, in which students and faculty brainstorm good ideas to move the food business forward. And I know Rachel Greenberger, who's the central coordinator of Babson's events, um, is on the call and I believe will be available to speak um, during the Q&A session. We have a lot of different resources available for you. Um, you'll see a screenshot of the Guide for Campus Coordinators, which is also available on our website at foodday.org backslash four underscore campuses. We also have a campuses one pager that's great to hand out um, to put up around your campus to advertise events. Um, I encourage you to check out Real Food Challenges Food Day page. Um, you'll see the URL up on, um, up on the screen right now. Um, there you'll find the student mobilizer sign up form. Many of you have already signed up. If not, I encourage you to um, give your name and email address, and that means that someone from Food Day or Real Food Challenge will follow up with you, and you'll be sure to get all of our communications. Uh, we have many more organizing tools and promotional materials on the resources section of Food Day. You'll find, um, if you register your event, you'll be um, eligible to get promotional materials, including Food Day posters, brochures, recipe cards, and stickers. Um, and I'll speak in just a minute about registering events. But um, if you are at all at a loss for how to turn an idea for an event into a reality, who you should reach out to, or if you need more ideas, um, I think you're, the first place I would recommend looking is the resources section of our website, um, and also the map of registered events, because you can see what other people are planning. Um, and get the planning resources that we've, uh, that we've created. So what will you do? And that's a question I hope that you're all thinking about or already have answers to um, and we'll be thinking about during this conversation. Um, there, are some, there are a few concrete things you can do right now or right after this webinar. One, again, is to sign up to be a campus, campus mobilizer. The second, um, if you haven't already, create an account at foodday.org backslash login really easy. All we need is your email address and a password. And that means that you can log in to create events, uh, edit your events, share them via social media, and also, um, and also connect with our blog and leave comments. We have a new Food Day website that's highly interactive. I um, encourage you to take a look at that. Um, when creating your event, we're encouraging everyone to register by September 24th so that we can get you those promotional materials I mentioned. It's a really easy, pretty much two-step process to create your event. As long as you have a login, you just have to go to the host and event section of our website um, and fill in your event information. We're asking that everyone who create a campus event, please use this naming convention when putting your event title in. You'll see that on your screen right now. And that is to um, first put in the words campus event, colon, and then whatever the title of your event is. And that's just so we make sure that we can track the hundreds of events that we're expecting this year and easily pull together you know, the scope of what universities are doing. And finally, once you register event, your event, I encourage you to share it via 
Facebook, uh, and Twitter, via your campus website, blogs. Um, we've we really worked to make our website this year much more interactive and um, integrated with social media. So you're fi you'll find that it's really easy to share via the various platforms that you're on. Uh, very quickly, for, and then I'm going to turn it over to Hannah. Um, Food Day 2012 is off to a great start. Uh, just today, we surpassed 500 registered events on our map, which is great. Um, our next benchmark is 1,000, and I think that we would love to see if we can see 1,000 events uh, within two weeks, and hopefully with your help, we can get there. We have over 100 volunteer coordinators around the country um, working in all 50 states and organizing their neighbors and communities. We've had over 30, probably by this point, over 40 city planning meetings and 20 regional and state planning calls. We've had a couple of really exciting things happen for the campaign. The U.S. Conference of Mayors about two months ago officially endorsed the Food Day campaign and unanimously passed a resolution declaring October 24th Food Day. Um, we like to think of this as a mandate from the Conference of Mayors asking all mayors in the country to also proclaim Food Day. So as you're organizing your events and you're thinking about how you're going to reach out to the community, I really urge you to consider um, contacting, contacting your, your mayor and getting a proclamation. As you can see, we have, uh, we have over 100 national partners, Real Food Challenge, Slow Food USA, National Sustainable Agriculture Coalition, Farm to School Network, kind of whatever, whatever niche you're looking to get into, Food Day probably has a partner that you can work with um, that has chapters in your area. And with that, I think I'm going to turn it over to Hannah to start talking about um, what Real Food Challenge, um, how Real Food Challenge specifically can be a resource. So Hannah, um, you should be all set. Um, I believe, yeah. I think that's working. Um, Yep, we can see you, or we can see your presentation. Okay, okay cool. Um, okay, well, thank, thank you, Haley, for that introduction. <laughs> um, and hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Hannah Wolf. I'm the National Food Day Coordinator for Real Food Challenge. I'm really excited to be partnering with Food Day again this year. Um, and this is an excellent opportunity to connect on-campus activism to the national food movement and to really make strides in your own community um, towards the sustainable, ethical, real food system that we're all ultimately working towards. Um, so first, I'm just going to lay out what all I'm going to go over for you. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the nuts and bolts of bringing food days to your campus, starting with some background on Real Food Challenge, um, a little more in depth than what Haley already gave, um, and our connection to Food Day, um, a little bit more about resources that are available, a couple ideas to incorporate into your events, and a few best practices to keep in mind during your planning process before we move on to our panelists. So with that, um, Real Food Challenge uh, is a national organization and network empowering students to affect change on their campus as a means of affecting the greater food system. Colleges and universities spend roughly $5 billion annually on food, which is a huge amount and a huge opportunity, which is, where, bleh, which is what we're tackling Sorry, through the Get Real campaign, uh, the goal of which is to shift $1 billion of those purchasing dollars to what we call real food by 2020. So our definition of real food is food that truly nourishes consumers, communities, producers, and the earth. Um, more specifically, food that is local or community-based, fair, ecologically sound, and or humane. And this is specifically what we want to see more of in college dining halls and what students in our network all over the country are lobbying for. Um, so the main component or the main tool, I guess, of this campaign is the Real Food Campus Commitment, which is a pledge signed by the president or chancellor of the university pledging to shift 20% or in some cases more of the school's food purchases to real food by 2020. Um, the commitment officially launched on Food Day last year, and since then we've had seven schools sign on, which is an awesome accomplishment. So if anyone else would like to add to that number, there's an opportunity. Um, 
Okay, so food day on campuses specifically. The student food movement has a lot of momentum built up. And corporate dining service providers like Sodexo, Bon Appetit, and Aramark are really starting to pay attention, which is huge. To be able to translate our individual actions on our campuses into policy change at an institutional level is an enormous achievement. But higher education and food on campuses are just one piece of the crazy mixed up puzzle that is our food system. And we need to unite the power that we've built up as students with the various other factions of the food movement to propel our voices beyond our own institutions and affect the entire system, which, if you haven't guessed by now, is just the opportunity that Food Day provides. <laughs> Um, an opportunity to have our voices heard by our schools, communities, our government, and ultimately the world, um, and to work in solidarity with the millions of others around the country and beyond who are working with the same ideals that we are. Um, thinking more locally, this is also a chance to connect all of the relevant stakeholders on your campus, so students, faculty, staff, dining, sustainability, everyone, um, all of whom are, are ultimately working towards the same goal of making your school the best that it can be. Um, food Day also opens up the door for newcomers to the world of food work because really it's up to you guys to shape Food Day where you are. Whatever issues you're most passionate about or are most relevant to your school or community, make that your rallying point. Um, that's really part of the beauty of Food Day. It's a day for all of us to take action and have all of our individual concerns. Uh, be heard collectively. So, um, in order to take action, uh, there are really five easy steps, some of which Haley has already mentioned. Uh, one, registering as a campus mobilizer via the form on our webpage, um, which will ensure that, similar to registering an event with Food Day, it will ensure that you receive emails from us with communications of the latest updates and action ideas. Um, access to any new resources we come across, um, and it'll also put you in touch with our organizers who can play a supporting role as well. Um, so step two, checking out our resources, some of which I will talk in depth about in just a moment. Step three, um, as Haley already went through, putting your events on the map. Um, foodday.org has a really exciting interactive map, so it's, it's just really cool. You can see what events are going on near you across the country. Um, yeah, it's just it's great, and Haley has already gone through that, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna repeat too much there. Um, step four is pretty self-explanatory: plan an awesome event. I think we're all capable of that. And step five: let us know how it went. Um, we'll all be in touch during well, not well during maybe the following food day, uh, both to celebrate the accomplishment of getting that done and to plug you in with upcoming opportunities in the world of food activism. Oh, gosh. OK. <laughs> so uh, going back to step two of checking out your resources, um, Food Day and Real Food Challenge have a variety of resources to use for planning your Food Day events, and primarily, uh, is primarily which, which Haley's already mentioned, our Guide for Campus Organizers, um, which is available at the two links that are on your screen, um, along with various other resources. Um, the guide itself, as you can see from the table of contents here, has summaries of issues most relevant to college campuses, uh, sample events from last year, talking points, um, and as you can see here, a sample planning timeline um, is just one example of, of all of the wonders that are in this document, um, which really breaks down the tasks from the months, weeks, and days leading up to food day. So clearly, we're already in September, <laughs> um, but using this framework to create your own timeline for the coming weeks I think could be a really a, a really valuable tool. Um, so there are also several people available to act as resources. On foodday.org, you'll find a list of local and regional coordinators to get in touch with. Um, Real Food Challenge also has a specific working group dedicated to Food Day Consulting, which consists of myself and three other students. Um, which you'll, who you'll be put in touch with as you sign up as a campus mobilizer. Um, we also have a team of regional field organizers who are working across the country with students in their respective regions who are campaigning for real food on their campuses. 
and you can find all of their contact information um, at the link that's on your screen, uh, or feel free to email me and I can connect you to the right person. Um, so as I mentioned, another way of connecting, the, connecting with them ah, is signing up as a campus mobilizer through Real Estate Challenge. And what will happen when you sign up is you'll automatically receive an email from me with resources and suggestions, including the aforementioned guide, and you'll be connected to the field organizer or working group member in your area. So whether you have specific questions or you know just would like someone to brainstorm with, all of these people are really wonderful resources. So I definitely encourage you to reach out to them. In terms of what to actually do on food day, I have two particular items to suggest. Uh, one being a photo petition which is something really easy to do while you're tabling or during an event with the premise that while physical petition signatures are great, being able to associate a face with those signatures is even more powerful. And logistically, it's super easy. Uh, you can either make signs yourself or get a whiteboard and allow each person to fill in why they want real food. It's a great way to engage people and find out you know, what the student body is interested in. Uh, while also allowing creativity and, and fun into the mix, which we all know is important. Um, closer to Food Day, we'll have more information on where to upload your photos after the event. Um, and we'll also have a bit of a competition going, um, the details of which are forthcoming. So stay tuned for that. Um, my second suggestion is to join us for the release of Food Mythbusters, an initiative of the Real Food Media Project, the first installment of which launches on Food Day. And so Food Mythbusters will be essentially what it sounds like. <laughs> um, it will be a series of videos and short films tackling the myths put out by conventional agribusiness. The first video tackles the myth that only industrial agriculture can feed the world and that sustainable ag doesn't stand a chance. Uh, the video itself is short, it's roughly seven minutes, and comes with an action kit similar to the Campus Organizer's Guide with ideas of events to form around screening the video and guidance for engaging people in conversations about these ideas. Um, so if you're interested in screening it, send an email to foodday.org at real food, wow, fail, foodday at realfoodchallenge.org, gosh, and we'll get additional information and specifics sent your way. So briefly, getting into the specifics of event planning, um, there are four big points that I want to leave everyone with. And I know looking at this list, initially it, it sounds really simple, but oftentimes it's easy to lose sight of, of what may now seem obvious uh, in the actual planning process. So the first thing, plan ahead. Food day is October 24th. Look at a calendar and start counting backwards from food day to see where each step of the process needs to be done by. And find out all of those logistical questions as soon as you can. Like how long does it take to reserve a room on campus? How long do you have to wait to get a budget approved for your club? Like just all of those things. Find out those deadlines, set them, and stick to them. And hold yourself and your team accountable. Um, speaking of your team, I would highly suggest <laughs> gathering a strong team and delegating tasks among everyone. Um, there's no reason why you have to go about it alone, unless you really want to. Um, reach out to fellow members of your group, your friends, even people you don't know yet. Go through the list of clubs at your school and get in touch with the leaders of groups that might be interested in collaborating. Um, in addition to you know, keeping self-care in mind as far as not totally overwhelming yourself, um, this is also a really cool opportunity for leadership development within your group. Um, talk to everyone and just get a sense for what they're passionate about, what their skills are, what they're capable of, and dole out tasks based on those qualities. Sometimes just a bit of trust and, and responsibility in that way can serve as a catalyst for someone like really just stepping up and, and becoming a real leader of the group. Third, uh, publicize. Uh, I mean, it's kind of obvious, if you don't tell anyone about your event, they won't know to come. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I think the go-to thing nowadays is Facebook events, which are great. Invite your friends, get them to invite their friends, that's all good. 
but you've got to go beyond Facebook. One rule of thumb that Real Food Challenge kind of uh, pushes uh, is that three forms of contact are what it takes for someone to really internalize something enough to show up to your event. So a Facebook invite, that's great, that's one, but that alone is, is not enough. Um, some other ideas are posting on your school's message board or community forum, talking to professors, uh, ask them to put your event up on their class webpage or on the department webpage. Um, if it's educational enough, even, you could propose it as an extra credit opportunity. Um, writing an op-ed for your school paper, or going to other clubs' meetings and just personally inviting those groups to show up. Um, and finally, having a system for turnout. Um, keeping track of, of all of everyone that you talk to and, and everyone that sounds interested, either while you're tabling or at meetings, or even just people you know that you think might be into it. Um, keep a list of all of those people and give them a call the night before. Remind them about the event and ask if you can count on them to be there. That kind of personal invitation not only shows that you actually paid attention, <laughs> um, but it's also it's more likely to draw people in for your event itself, but also to your group overall. Um, so all of that being said, uh, we're now going to move into our panel of students to share about using these kind of tactics in their experience with food day planning. Beginning with Allison. Hi, um, I'm Allison from New York University. Um, let's see, I don't move the slides, do I? Go to oh, the next one. Sorry, yeah, I sorry. do it. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> so um, let's just get right in there. Um, so our goals with Food Day at NYU were to engage the student body through discussion and interactive workshops. Um, we really, really wanted to put an emphasis on getting the students um, to be involved in something with it, like if we could at all hands-on hands um, activities in our workshops. Um, we also wanted to connect the students with local um, New York City and New York State issues whenever possible, so bringing um, these large food day issues back home to where a lot of the students are living. Um, and we wanted to partner with the city or campus groups to really make this possible. Um, we also wanted to encourage students to utilize the campus and city groups as knowledge and activism resources so that after they leave these workshops, they're able to actually go out and take this um, knowledge that they just have gained and actually do something with it. Um, and of course, we want to represent these issues um, that Food Day represents. Um, so moving on to... Um, let me move the slide. Next one. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So um, uh, last year we uh, this was our first year doing it in 2011, um, and we started out with a really really big list of things we wanted to do, and we ended up with two main things. We had an awareness table um, from 11 to 12 during the day, and it was sort of a booth outside of one of our um, busy campus buildings um, near Washington Square Park, and we. Um, tabled the event, tried to get people to come over and take papers from us on certain, you know, all the different issues and sign a petition. And we gave out recipe cards for the um, SNAP recipes. Um, and then in the evening from 7 to 9, we had a discussion panel called Who Grows Your Food, um, which is what the picture is of, um, which was very successful. We actually had, uh, we actually oversold our tickets on it. Um, so that was really great. Our lessons learned, um, these I think are really key. Good help is hard to find, and it's even harder to keep. So we had a lot of people drop out, um, and I think this was really hard for us. We, this is one of the main reasons that we decided to um, narrow down what we wanted to do. Um, so just keep that in mind. Try to get people who, who um, you know, have either worked on events before or who seem like they're really interested and actually have the schedule to be able to keep um, the event in mind. Um, um, I know it was mentioned before, but universities are full of bureaucracy, so it's very it's actually very hard to reserve a room. Sometimes there's money involved, even if even if it's your own university, sometimes they want you to pay for a room to be able to have a venue there. Um, so keep that in mind beforehand. Um, also getting some politicians involved is very difficult, especially since food day is um, during harvest season, and this is an election season. Um, 
Uh, so what we learned from 2011 was that something is better than nothing. That was kind of our motto at the end. Um, we had all this list of great events that we wanted to do, and it was something's better than nothing. We're glad we're out there. We're glad we're talking this question. At what point, uh, uh, at this point, what is manageable given my time, my money, and my manpower constraints? Um, try to keep that in mind because that was a successful event. Um, so moving on to 2012, um, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so um, what we changed this year, we had, instead last year we ended up with um, only like three people working on um, our planning committee, and this year we have Allison, I think we're having a little trouble hearing you right now. I don't know if you can speak a bit closer to your computer microphone. Sources of connections and networking. Uh, we are also utilizing shared Google Docs, which I think that we have found very helpful, and email chains um, so that when we're not, so that we don't have to meet every week, um, and we can. Sorry, um, I think I just lost audio, but it came back. Okay, so um, also delegating tasks. Um, and reserving venues as early as possible again. Um, and we've also found that in-kind donations are sometimes easier, especially for campuses. Um, in-kind means that you're taking donations like um, you go to Whole Foods and you need, you need food, so they're going to donate you food for your you know, cooking demonstration or whatever instead of just donating you money. Um, that way you don't have to deal with having a specific place for the money to go and you don't have to deal with all the paperwork. Um, market your event, so you know, get the word out through all those different um, Facebook, Twitter, all sorts of different things. That way you can increase the amount of people who are coming to your event. And lastly, uh, having a sign-in or a registration really helps to organize the day, of, the day of planning so that you know how many people you're really going to expect. Um, and that way, you know, if people have already registered for it, they're more likely to actually attend the day of and to remember to go. Um, so looking at our 2012 event, um, I just want to show you a quick slide. This is what we are um, planning for, for um, 2012. And as you can see, we have um, a lot more than we had last year, um, partly, and be partly because we have so many people, that, so many great people that are helping us. Um, and you can just see there's a, lot of, there's a list of collaborators. We're um, actually delegating some of the work to them as well. So hopefully this year it'll just knock the socks off a, a lot of people. Um, anyway, I think that's, that's it for me. Great. Thanks a lot, Allison. Hi, friends. My name is Jessica Baltmanis. I am a student at UC San Diego, um, and I'll be sharing about our events last year and what we're planning for this year and then some takeaway points. So last year we did a week-long series of events, and you could see we made our own custom flyer um, with an organization that we were working with. So I work in sustainability for our university centers, which is the student union, and I work in food retail. So UCSD passed a sustainable food policy in 2010 uh, that was it's a campaign by the Real Food Challenge, but we customized our policy to be 25% sustainable food by 2016. And so my job is enforcing this policy within our 16 restaurants, so actually connecting the restaurants, the restaurant managers and owners with sustainable food suppliers. And, and we have franchises like Burger King and Panda Express on our campus, so um, it's a big to accomplish and so for this our first event last year was a food day expo and mixer where we invited local sustainable food suppliers we also invited student organizations and community organizations with the intent of making allowing for connections to be made between our restaurant managers and these suppliers and also giving a place for students to you know look for volunteer opportunities or internships uh, then later that night, we had a film screening about 
20-something-year-old farmers in Georgia. And then after that, we had a munch and mingle where people just reflect on the day. And we had some good discussions there. Then the next day, we wanted to encourage folks to live sustainably at home. So we gave out pots, soil, and seeds. Then the following day, we wanted to incorporate art into the week-long series of events. So we had a community mural painting at our pub on campus. And we painted the Real Food Wheel, which you could Google. Um, and then the next day, we had a best-selling author whose his name is Jeffrey Smith. And uh, he presented on the dangers of genetically modified foods. And that event had over 100 people attend. And we had food donated by a local natural food store. Um, it was a great event. And then on the next slide, we, these are our plans for this year. We, we want to just do two events to really focus our energies. So the first one is, again, the Sustainable Food Expo, where we're going to invite similar suppliers and more to be connected once again with our owners and managers as we're making progress in achieving our, our sustainable food policy goal. And also, again, invite student organizations and community organizations just to really give an energetic buzz to the movement and allow people the opportunity to get involved. And we're also planning a Yes on Proposition 37 panel, uh, which is, are going to be folks discussing the importance of passing this proposition in California, which would require the labeling of genetically modified foods. Uh, so it's just those two events. And then the next slide will list the takeaway points of lessons we learned last year. And the first is to prepare as early as possible. The second is to collaborate and take advantage of the networks that you already have. Everybody has their own networks and connections. If you know the manager of somebody at a natural food store, maybe you could talk to them. They could donate foods for your events. Um, the next one is to have strong publicity efforts, which is very important because people respond to this. And if there's a certain energy on even a flyer, then people might be drawn into that. Um, and then simply the last one is to make the events lively, um, because that sticks with people, and they'll remember that. So I think that was all I had. Great. Thanks, Jessica. We're going to hear from Catherine now. Hey, guys. I'm Catherine. I'm a sophomore at Duke University, and I'm the coordinator of our Real Food campaign on campus. Um, so to give you a little more background on our campaign, um, we're a pretty new group at Duke, and um, we've only been around for about two years now. And so we have a lot of goals in the upcoming year as an organization at large, um, many of which, as you can see, involve running our real food calculator and completing baseline assessments for eateries on campus. We also have a food systems working group, um, which is kind of a cohesive group on campus that involves students and administrators, and we're generally trying to get more people talking about food. Um, but a lot of uh, what goes into making these um, goals possible is increasing awareness and education. We're really hoping to increase the size of our group. It's about 15 members right now. And um, we have a Duke campus farm and a Duke community garden, which is incorporated into the Duke Food Project. So we work with them a lot. And we're also hoping to um, organize events with other groups in the Triangle area. So we're seeing um, real, the Food Day as a way to kind of kickstart a lot of these initiatives that we have at Duke. And I think you'll find that um, the event that we're planning this year for Food Day is kind of indicative of what a newer, younger group can accomplish um, if they really set their mind to it, despite how long they've been around or how many members they have. Um, so for Food Day, there's going to be an event hosted by the Duke Campus Farm and also one by Bon Appetit. And we're kind of planning an event to kind of be the spearhead of that week on Food Day. We're hoping to have a real food dinner on Chapel Quad, which is probably the most iconic place on campus, um, at 5.30. And we want it to be a pretty large event. So we're hoping to sell beforehand for $7 at least 100 tickets. Um, this will help us know how many people are there and also increase accountability, which people have talked about before, by having people sign up beforehand. Um, and this event is going to be targeted not just for Duke students, but for local farmers, food workers in Duke, and also um, any administrators and faculty. We really want to make this an opportunity for different sectors of Duke and Durham um, to come together and talk about what food means to us and what goals we kind of have in moving forward with the sustainable food system. And um, reflecting this, our event is going to be as sustainable as possible. 
we're going to have a composting portion to our event where people can see how much food they waste and also see what you can do with food that it, it doesn't necessarily have to be thrown out if it's not eaten, and um, also reusable utensils and silverware um, for the event. And we, um, at our school, our food is provided by Bon Appetit, and they are a great um, food provider. And they, um, we have a working agreement right now to have them provide a main vegetarian and meat dish for the event. We're still figuring out logistics with them, but they have agreed to move forward with us in helping to plan this day. And then we'll also be reaching out to local eateries to have dishes from uh, those restaurants as well so that um, students in Duke, the Duke community can kind of see where else outside of campus you can eat sustainably. And at the event, we're also going to have um, a table, which is on the end of chapel, it's close to our bus stop, which students pass through all day long, a really high volume. And there will be information there that we can pass out to people walking by who weren't able to go to the event or didn't know about it. Um, and hopefully we can raise awareness in that situation as well um, as the people who are actually attending the event. And for funding, we are using um, a, our sustainability office has a green grant fund, which is up to $50,000. Um, each year for student-led initiatives that increase sustainability on campus. So um, if you're looking for funding sources, if you have a, um, a sustainability office or something similar, it's great to look there because they have a lot of time, great opportunities for students. So kind of um, the goals that we have for Food Day is to show administrators that we are committed to eating real food at Duke. Um, the administration is supportive of food and signing on to the commitment, but they want to do it on a longer time scale than we want to. So by having so many students and people coming out for this event, we really want to show them that we want real food on campus and we want it now. So we're really hoping that this is going to be a kickstart in shifting the um, climate of Duke to be thinking more consciously about where your food is coming from, who put your food on the table, and what you can do to improve the current food system on campus and beyond. Um, so we're really hoping that this event is going to be the spark that starts a deeper conversation on campus. And um, from this initial uh, event, sort of, we're hoping to have a lot of other future events with speakers and um, film screenings. And we're hoping that it's really going to be a branching point and a turning point in our campaign on campus. Um, so this is some of the things that a younger student, uh, a younger campaign, um, what we're hoping to accomplish. And we really think this is feasible for our uh, for Real Food campaign at Duke uh, for Food Day this year. OK, well, this is Hannah again. Um, but I think that in the interest of time, I'm going to hand things back to Haley to move on to a bit of Q&A. Um. OK, great. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, we are going to turn things over to um, to Q&A now. So there are a couple options, as I said before. Um, if you have a question, please either um, you can type in your you can type in your question or click the raise hand icon. And we're gonna I'm gonna start with one um, with a basic question, and that's to all of our panelists, including Hannah, who organized at her school, uh, Drew University, or who's organizing there. Um, can you speak to any positive outcomes that you've seen from being involved in Food Day, either in the events you're planning this year, or for those of you who organized last year, you know, a change over time? So any, any positive outcomes that you have noted? And that's to anyone, to any of our panelists. Hi, this is Jessica from UC San Diego. I can speak to our Food Day events last year, and specifically the Food Expo. It connected our restaurant managers with some su sustainable food suppliers. And from that, they were actually able to make connections uh, in terms of purchasing. So there was some fair trade companies we had there, and one of the restaurants um, became connected to them and started purchasing more fair trade beverages from them. And we have, we've had a few other connections like this that happened from the Expo. Thanks. 
And this is Hannah. Um, I, I went to Drew University last year. I, I just graduated this spring. Um, but we, we planned a week of events for Food Day, or for Food Week, rather. Um, and one, I don't, know that, I don't know that I would say that Food Day like, was for sure the catalyst for our group really taking off, but it was definitely a, a turning point in our group having a presence on campus. Um, I mean, we, one, of our, one of our events, the, the kind of culminating event at the end of the week was a cooking competition in our dining hall. Um, we had teams of two students to set like a hot plate um, working with ingredients found in the dining hall and featuring what real food that we already knew existed in, in our dining hall. Um, and so we had that competition during lunch, um, like during the mad like, lunch rush of all the students. So it not only drew in um, a bunch of, like a bunch more, I guess, student awareness of, of our existence on campus, but by having, um, we had the president of the United, of, wow, the president of the university, um, the head chef, and a representative from the uh, Aramark um, dining company that, that works at Drew act as our uh, judges <laughs> uh, to judge the, the winner of the competition. So it was sort of a great like way of um, bringing a, a whole array of stakeholders together. And from that point on was really kind of when Students for Sustainable Food kind of hit the upswing of momentum. Great. Um, we had a question earlier uh, about, um, and also just so folks know, um, we're getting close to an hour. I think, um, I believe our panelists are mostly able to stay on for an extra 10 or so minutes. So for our audience, if you're able to stay on a bit past an hour, please do. Um, we'll continue answering questions. Um, and just so everyone knows, and there have been a few questions about this, uh, we will send follow-up notes on this presentation, on this webinar, to everyone on the call, as well as those who registered but didn't call in. That will include folks' contact information, the recording to the webinar, and um, these presentations. So um, to our panelists, we had a question earlier about um, interest in doing a petition as part of an event, but people were asking, what should be the, the focus of the petition? And I know um, Real Food Challenge, I believe, that you have a specific suggestion for folks um, regarding a petition. But what do you suggest, or also what have our other student organizers done for a food day petition? Hey there, this is Catherine. Um, we had petitioning going on last year, um, and we found it was really important to include in the petition that students um, not only wanted real food and on campus, but would also use the purchasing power and would spend their money on real food on campus. Um, but also, I know, uh, I think Hannah mentioned it earlier, but I think photo petitions are much more effective um, than just having people sign their name. We actually met with the president of our university last year, and he kind of said, well, I know I stop all the time and sign petitions, um, and was much more impressed when we showed him our photo petition. So I'd really encourage doing photo petitioning, or if you want to do a standard petition, to include some sort of statement that students are saying that they are going to support financially the decision to have more real food on campus. Great. Hannah or David, anything to add um, from Real Food Challenge's perspective? Yeah, this is Hannah. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is Hannah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, as far as I think generally, like, my personal advice for petitions would, would be, like, focusing on a specific change that you're working towards or, or on like just just making sure it's like a clear ask um, versus sort of like you know showing I mean it's important to show how many people are, are generally in support but um, as far as it, it being effective but in the context of real food challenge um, the get real campaign um, which I mentioned before is is working to shift a billion dollars 
to real food out of uh, campus food purchases by 2020. Um, I mean, that's a, a perfect example of something that you could petition for, <laughs> uh, for your university to sign on to the real food campus commitment. Um, I mean, I, we at Drew, we didn't, we actually didn't get to the point of, of collecting signatures, but um, it, it definitely is a is a tactic that that I'd suggest using. Great. Um, so we did an informal poll during the webinar um, and asked people, asked those on the call, um, do you currently have events planned, um, or are you on this call looking for ideas and more kind of just getting started? And we had a mix, but I would say probably more people who answered than not are saying um, variations on, I'm just getting started, I'm looking for ideas, I've never really organized a food day event or, you know, done a big event before, um, or in one case, um, Jasper is saying that the organization that he's, he's not really sure if he can organize food day with the organization that he's affiliated with. So the question for the, for the panelists, for Hannah, um, for David is, for those just getting started, what should they do first? If people are concerned that they don't have that much time or that many resources, what is a good way, and especially for those who organized last year or are organizing, how can you do, how can you bite off a reasonable amount and where can you find the help that you need? So, so does anyone want to weigh in on that? And Allison, did you want to add add to that? Um, no, I, no. Um, let's see. For this question, I think I think at this point, like, there's really not a whole lot of time left to. Um, make like a huge event, which is how we got stuck last year, um, kind of whittling it down to um, one booth. Um, but I would kind of come up with a list of ideas that you're really interested in doing um, with whoever else is involved with it, and then narrow it down to one of those ideas. Pick one and try to do, just do one thing really well instead of trying to do multiple things. I think that's probably like the biggest advice that I could give if you want to um, start an event at this point. Yeah, this is Hannah, and I definitely agree with that. I mean, from my um, experience with Drew, it, you know, a week of events, it was great, but it probably, energy probably would have been more efficiently focused on, on just one day. Um, but as far as, as what you can do, if, if you're, like, literally just getting started, I would really suggest signing up as a campus mobilizer. Um, you, I, I feel like, I'm, well, I hope it's not a misconception, but I feel like it's easy to think that, like, okay, well, I need to have an event in mind before signing up, but that's totally not the case. Like, as soon as you sign up, um, based on where you're located, I'll pair you up with either a regional field organizer or someone from our Food Day Working Group to really, like, act as any, whatever sort of support you need, um, whether you have an event in mind or whether you really need someone to brainstorm with. Um, everyone, all of, the, all of the RFOs, as well as working group members, have a lot of experience, a lot of collectively experience, um, organizing on campus. So uh, they're, they're definitely, they can definitely help. Um, I, I think that would be a good place to start for sure. Um, I wanted to throw in Emma Brewster from the audience had a really good point. Um, she says you can always use one event to do multiple things. So you don't don't think that you have to do a week long of events, although if you can, that's great. So Emma gives an example that you could have a panel discussion as your primary event and maybe recruit faculty at your school to be the panelists. Um, but while you're there, your group can have a table to collect signatures on a Get Real panel, um, hold a photo petition, and also have people sign up to your listserv, um, and that way you're building your group's reach, but also having a petition that marks things. So I think that's a great idea, thinking about how one event can do multiple things. Let's see. We have a question from Jason Wood. Um, he's interested in screening a film for Food Day. 
specifically the movie Grow, and he's wondering um, who does he contact to find out about getting a copy. Um, one thing that I'll mention is that Food Day does have a film screening guide that should be ready in about a week. Um, we'll be sending an email to our entire network about that and a couple other new guides that will be ready. So Jason and others, if you haven't already signed up um, on the Food Day website to receive emails, definitely go ahead and do that, and we'll make sure that you that you get that guide, which will have information on how to how to access movies. So any other um, questions from the audience, feel free to type them in or click the raise hand icon if you want to if you want to share. And then also Hannah, David, or any of our other panelists, um, if you have something. We, we have a question right now from Naomi Ross. So Naomi, you're unmuted if you have that. Oh, um, <laughs> Naomi, you're unmuted if you want to speak. Okay. Uh, yeah. Wait. Or you can type it if you're having sound issues. Go ahead and type me your question. So we'll hear from Naomi um, as soon as she's able to type that in. Okay, the question from Naomi is, um, does the Food Mythbusters that Hannah brought up cost um, money to use or do? So Hannah, can you, can you speak to that? It does not. It's totally free. Um, the, uh, all it really takes is letting us know that you're interested, and we'll put you in touch with the right people and get that all to you. But no, it's totally free. Mm -hmm. And I guess that um, is another reminder for everyone on the call. Um, if they do need to get in touch with them, and it sounds like there are many more questions that I'm getting from people that um, we're not able to address now. Um, what is the best way, do we think, to go about having people get back in um, get back in touch? I think that probably should they start by signing up to be a campus mobilizer, Hannah, or We'll also list our contact information, in my case, by state after the call. Yeah, I think that I think that's a, a great uh, way to go about it. I mean, signing up that'll automatically put you in touch with me um, because I'm who's sort of overseeing that uh, database of signups. So, yeah, that'll definitely get you in touch with the right people. Mm -hmm. And then I'll ask one more question, and then we can wrap up. But again, if anyone wants to stay on, we can keep answering questions as long as um, panelists can stay on. So I think the wrap-up would be um, that what I'm seeing from a lot of people in the audience is, again, um, they're just getting started. So maybe if all of our panelists, um, so Allison and Catherine, Jessica, Hannah, and then David, if you want to weigh in, too, um, if there's kind of one takeaway you want to leave people with, and again, keeping in mind that it sounds like a lot of people are you know, maybe just getting getting into the school year and just getting started, you know, what is your one best piece of advice for people to to have a great food day event that, you know, they're proud of, but that is also, that's also manageable and collaborative? Um, can I go? Yeah, please do. Okay. So this is Allison, and like I said, um, I'm really a big advocate of finding something simple and just trying to do that as well as possible. Um, but the other thing is, like, make sure you're, it's something that you're really interested in, even if it's not something that is um, super, like, directly related to food day. Um, like, it's not farm workers' rights. Instead, maybe it's, like, um, restaurant workers' rights or something like that. Um, you know, even if you have to think outside of the box, the most important part is that you're really passionate about it, something that's really close to you. Because um, that way, even if you come across difficulties, um, you, it's, you know, you're willing to work past them a little bit more, um, and you're willing to kind of stick it out. Great. Anyone else? Oh, this is Jessica. I would say take advantage of the network. Um, and the community that you're involved in, it makes things a lot easier.
Yeah, um, this is Catherine. Going off of what Jessica said, um, the Real Food Campaign at Duke, um, we actually started off as a sub-campaign in our Environmental Alliance, which is our largest undergraduate environmental group. Um, so I think especially, I know some people I've met at regional training that um, there's no food group on this campus at all. Um, so if that's the situation for you, I think it's good to look if you can work under or with another group at the moment that's already existing on campus. And um, yeah, see if you can work with them to try and try and make an event happen. Um, and also to reach out to as many people as possible just because um, there's a lot of people that you find kind of coming out of the word work who once they hear about an event are going to want to get involved. So make sure you stay open to including more people and always looking out for new members. I think that's great. Um, and this is Haley. I want to add um, one of our food day interns this summer um, is now a senior at Yale University, which is very involved in food day both this year and last year. And we were just catching up today. Um, and it sounded to me like he really hit the ground running when he got back to New Haven from summer. So I think for everyone who's kind of, I don't know what to do, and there seems like a lot, there's a lot of steps, I think your first step is Set that first planning meeting and invite people far and wide, as people are saying. So send out emails to all the student groups that you know about, post, post on campus, and see who comes to that first meeting. Because I really think, I see this in all the, the Food Day community meetings I lead, that when you get a group of people together who are passionate about various issues, that's when the great ideas come about, and many hands make light work. So, so get people together and just you know set the date for that first meeting. Bring some food, maybe not pizza because it's not super healthy, but you know, if you want to, you want to, and um, really just get ideas going. So I don't think we have any more specific questions from the audience. Um, just so those of you who've been typing me questions know. Um, I will make sure that either I or the person um, at Real Food Challenge who is um, working in your region gets back to you. We've had a couple more questions about screening films. Um, it sounds like there's interest in food mythbusters. So um, you can expect follow-up notes on this call by the end of the week from me. Um, again, if you have any questions um, that you want to address to me that, can, that I can cover in those notes, please email me. Um, I should have put this up on my uh, presentation, but this is Haley. My email is hgiluli at cspinet.org, and that's h-g-i-l-l-o-o-l-y at cspinet.org. Um, and I will also send, um, send this in a chat to everyone right now. So um, any of our panelists, or Hannah especially, any closing thoughts? Well, another note of, um, of contact info, just to reiterate for anyone interested in the Food Mythbusters, um, or just, I mean, any other questions you have, really, uh, send an email to foodday at realfoodchallenge.org. Um, and yeah, and I'll get that information to you. Um, as far as closing thoughts go, um, I was trying to think of like what my one takeaway point would be, and everything that, that everyone has already mentioned was really great. Um, I think, gosh, I don't know. I don't know how to narrow it down. I mean, this sounds redundant, but I think that like as far as um, figuring out like what your next steps are personally, um, I think, like Haley mentioned, having someone to talk to is really helpful with that. Um, so I would just encourage everyone to sign up and get in touch, and um, we can we can help you out however you need. Great. So I think with that, we're going to conclude the webinar. Um, again, thanks to all of you for attending, and thanks to the 23 of you who have stayed on the call 15 minutes late um, on your Wednesday evening. We really appreciate it. Um, we've had many questions. Again, um, we will follow up with you one by one. Um, you can expect full follow-up notes as well as a recording of this webinar. Um, and again, please get in touch. I think probably your first best email address really is foodday at realfoodchallenge.org. Um, ask us any questions. Um, 
We want to be back in touch with you. Thanks to you all so much for being involved with Food Day and Real Food Challenge. Um, our goal is to blow the 255 number of campuses that participated last year out of the water. And I think with your help um, and with your network's help, we can do that. So again, thanks very much, and have a great evening, everyone.